a wonderful Tuesday, either morning or afternoon. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about bandwidth prioritization in Nebula. And so by bandwidth prioritization, we mean bandwidth management in QoS settings. So we're going to cover the three different uh, hardware solutions that we have in Nebula and how bandwidth management and SIP or, or any type of prioritization, either SIP or uh, bandwidth management or QoS pertains to each and every individual piece of hardware. So we're going to start with our AP settings. And then after the AP settings, we're going to switch over to our um, we're going to switch over to our switch settings. And then from our switch settings, we're going to take a look at the gateway settings. So each and every one of these, they have their own settings for doing bandwidth management control. So we're going to actually look at each and every one of those for the bandwidth control setting options. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and switch over to our gateway. Uh, actually, we'll start with the, um, the actual, the AP first. So let me go ahead and bring up our Nebula. and bring up our Nebula screen here. All right, here we go. So now you should see our Nebula dashboard. Um, this is our cloud-based Nebula demo that we have set up in the cloud um, that you can use to manage and configure all of your devices, either your gate gateway, your access points, or your switches. So first we'll begin with our access points and looking at prioritization. So under access point, under configure, you're going to have an option for traffic shaping. So under traffic shaping, if we go ahead and click on that, we have an option to do individual traffic shaping for each VLAN user. Now this option here is a ProPAC feature because it does have a diamond here. So if you have the ProPAC license, you can do bandwidth prioritization based on VLAN. So in order to do that, you would just go ahead and click on add. And then here you can give the rule a name. So let's just say that we have your typical uh, layout with your access points. You have three different SSIDs that are broadcast and each SSID is on its own VLAN. So VLAN 100 could be for your guests, VLAN 200 could be for your administrators, and VLAN 300 could be for your staff. So let's just say that you would like to give your staff a certain type of prioritization with bandwidth. We want to set that staff VLAN to have, say, you know, we'll go back here and we'll say VLAN 300 and we'll say that this is our staff and then we want the staff to be able to have specific type of bandwidth. So we can bring this slider here to determine, you know, our up and our down, our upload and our downloads. So this is download specifically. I could put in 100 for our download, and then we can put in 100 for our upload. And this is going to pertain to the whole VLAN for each and every individual user on that VLAN. Um, so if we went ahead and add this, we can add this as a specific rule for our staff. And then the same thing would pertain to the other VLAN. So, so for VLAN 200 for your administrators, if we wanted to give them unlimited, we would just set that as a zero for both, both your up and your down. So this is more towards bandwidth management where you're managing the bandwidth that is used by, by a specific VLAN on the SSID that's being broadcast. And again, this option here is specifically a, uh, a ProPAC feature that's licensed. However, if you do not have the ProPAC licensing, you do have the ability to do bandwidth shaping. So if we go over here to access point and we go to SSID advanced settings, and if we scroll down to the very bottom here, we have the rate limit. So this rate limit is gonna be a global rate limit for the whole access point, meaning that each, each and every individual user, regardless of VLAN, is going to be set up with this particular profile. So again, if we come over here and set it to 50 down and 50 up, that means that regardless of what VLAN this particular user may be a part of or what SSID they're connected to, they're all going to get the maximum of 50 up and 50 down. So that's where the difference is when it comes to licensing time that comes to play. So with your basic options with traffic options here for traffic rate limiting, again, this is going to be for a global setting for the access point itself. It's going to, it's not going to see any VLAN or anything that it's coming from and determine the rate limiting. It's just going to apply a rate limit for everybody. Now, if you need a more granular setting again, just go back over here and you have ProPAC, you would come over here to traffic shaping because under traffic shaping, you have the ability to determine specific VLANs and separate your traffic bandwidth rules based off of the particular VLAN. So again, that's going to be the differences and you're going to see something similar again with the switches as well, where there's two different options where if you have the ProPAC license, you have a little bit more granularity of your control when it comes to rate limiting. Whereas we have the basic pro, uh, the non-ProPAC, which is gonna be your basic free version, which gives you the ability to do traffic shaping, 
but you won't have the granular configuration such as we have here with our VLAN availability for the traffic shaping up and down. So again, if you have the basic, um, you would just come over here to SSID advanced settings and you would just set your bandwidth management rules as seem fit for your particular installation. Uh, I would recommend that if you were to do this, um, make sure you do not leave it on unlimited because that means that anybody could come in and get all of the bandwidth that's available. I mean, someone can come in and, you know, if you don't have any application, um, scanning for applications, you don't have like an application patrol um, in your network and someone could come in with a, um, they can come in with their own, let's just say BitTorrent client and they can start sapping away all of your bandwidth with the BitTorrent client. So I would suggest that you do not leave it on unlimited. But moving along, we're gonna shy away from the access points because those are pretty much your only options when it comes to uh, traffic shaping. There is no traffic shaping in terms of prioritization, in terms of setting up the uh, priority to a specific uh, priority for that particular SSID, like you would see on switches. Um, you only have the, the ability to set priorities in your switches and your gateways. You do not have it on the access points. Uh, the access points is going to be purely from a bandwidth management standpoint where you can uh, rate limit your clients that are connecting up either, again, based on VLAN if you have the ProPath or just doing a global setting for your non-ProPath, your free version. Okay, moving on to our switches, it's a little bit different. So uh, we'll start on the switches with the um, settings that we can do for um, QoS. So if you, go to, if you go to switch and if you go to switch settings, there's three options that we have here. Um, we have quality of service, we have voice VLAN, and we have vendor ID based VLAN. Uh, this option here for vendor ID based VLAN is specifically for uh, ProPAT, because again, it has a diamond option, but I'll get into those options in just a minute. So here we have our basic quality of service option in the switch. Uh, so for quality of service, you would just click on add. And then what you can do is you can give specific VLANs a certain priority. So moving back to that previous example, let's just say that we didn't want to use rate limiting on the access point, but we have three VLANs. We have you know, VLAN 100, VLAN 200, VLAN 300. We can then specify that those VLANs have the highest priority as it traverses through the switch. So for VLAN 100, let's just say that VLAN 100 is our guest network. Uh, we want it to have you know, kind of a lower priority over our staff. So if our staff is on VLAN 300, we can give them the highest priority of one. And then for our you know, guest VLAN, which is you know, VLAN 100, we can give them a priority of three. So this means that all traffic on that particular VLAN for VLAN 100 uh, for your guest network is gonna have a lower priority than your staff network, which is your VLAN 300. So you can give it the higher priority or you can give it a lower priority based on what's needed for your particular installation. That's option number one that you can choose. Uh, the second option is going to be voice VLAN. Uh, voice VLAN is very particularly used for when you want to automatically assign a specific VLAN to a specific group of OUIs. And what OUIs are, are uh, basically it is the identifier, the MAC address identifier. So the first six characters of a MAC address is the OUI. It's basically the manufacturer's identifier for that particular device. And this is very helpful because if you're using SIP phones that all belong to the same manufacturer, you can use the OUI of that particular phone set and put in the six characters of the MAC address for six in the OUI right here. And then what that means is that when a specific MAC address comes up um, through the network, it's gonna automatically assign it a priority and it's gonna assign it a VLAN. So you can create a voice VLAN on the fly. So as it traverses the switch, you can apply a VLAN to that particular OUI for that particular vendor, for that particular vendor that has a SIP phone, and then you can give it a priority. So you can give it a voice VLAN. We could say the voice VLAN is you know, 400, and then we can give it a priority of one, which is the highest priority. So this option is very, uh, is very useful, specifically if you're using a lot of SIP phones that, have, uh, that come from the same manufacturer and you just wanna put them on their own voice VLAN with the highest priority possible. Uh, and then finally here, we have our vendor ID-based VLAN. So the vendor ID-based VLAN is going to be very similar to what we saw here above, but you see here, the difference is you can only enter in um, your, one, your one OUI, but you can only bind it to a specific voice VLAN and priority. 
Whereas the vendor ID based VLAN here is you can then do a vendor OUI, you can assign it a VLAN and a priority, and you can do multiple ones here. So the difference being here is that you only have like a one shot here for the voice VLAN, but vendor ID based VLAN, you have multiple entries that you can create based on VLAN. So if we wanted to have our vendor OUI for say our SIP phones, we can do that with our priority set. And let's just say that we have another set, maybe we have the same printers, um, we can put them with a specific priority. So we can put a vendor OUI for our printers if they're all the same printer, have their own VLAN and we can give them a priority. Um, let's just say that we have um, a, a device that has, you're working in a warehouse, you have um, scanners that you wanna use, you have QR scanners. Uh, you can give them the vendor OUI with their VLAN and a priority. So you can see how you have the options to kind of expand the vendor based, uh, vendor ID based VLAN to a large list. So again, this is a pro pack feature. Uh, going back with voice VLAN, it's similar to the vendor ID based VLAN, but it'll automatically assign a VLAN, one VLAN to that particular OUI. And then also we have again, our QoS. And then again, our QoS is just applying a specific VLAN with a specific priority. We also have the ability to go into the actual switch ports themselves. We can set an ingress and an e ingress and egress based bandwidth based on the specific port. Uh, this here is also another pro pack feature. So if we go in here and look at switch port number two, we can go to bandwidth control and then we can enable bandwidth for both the ingress and the egress for that particular port. Um, again, this is a pro pack feature. Um, if you really need this feature, you will need pro pack, but more often than not, a lot of people don't use this particular uh, option. Um, it's more for um, you when you want to provide a specific bandwidth control for a certain port uh, going out of the switch. And that's pretty much it for the switch side of things. And moving along, we can go to look at the security gateway. So under security gateway, we would come over here to security gateway and then we go to policy route. And policy route is gonna be where our settings for our, um, our basically for our, um, actually, I'm sorry, that's, that's a mistake. Uh, it's under here, it's under security services and it's under uh, traffic shaping. And actually this is an NSG. So if you're under an, if you have an NSG or a, a, a not a USG flex, in the NSG, it's under traffic shaping and it's a little bit different. I'll kind of cover both of them really quick. Um, so if you have an NSG, whether it be a 100, 200, 300, the traffic shaping is gonna be where you set your uh, bandwidth limits for your client. On USG Flex and ATP, it's a little bit more granular, which I'll show you in just a moment. But on your NSGs, you would just come down here to your global bandwidth limits, and then you can set it up on a per client basis. So you can set a range. So you could say your start and your end of your IP range. So you can set it for the whole subnet. You can choose your destination IP, which would be of course any that's going out of the firewall. You can choose your ports, your protocol, and then here you have your slider for your up and your down and your priority. So again, this is more of a global setting. Um, you can create multiple different rules and it's, and it's per client. So you'll see that there's not an option for VLAN that's only based on IP address. Um, another thing you'll see that's absent is the ability to do it based off of say a specific um, application. So you only have the option to do it based on protocol and port. Um, if you are familiar with our firewalls, you do in the standalone mode have the option to do it based off of application. So you could say um, anything coming from this particular IP address that's using this particular application, if you use application patrol. So if they're using say uh, a chat service like Skype, you can then give that particular application from that IP address, a specific bandwidth and a specific priority. Um, the NSGs do not have that capability um, just because they are much older and they don't have the capabilities of doing that while in Nebula. So just keep uh, aware of that distinct difference. Now, if you wanna look at the USG and the, the USG Flex and ATP, it's a little bit different. Um, we would just come over to the firewall section and then we would go to routing. And then here under routing, there's an option for policy route traffic shaping. So if you go ahead and click on add, we have the criteria for our traffic shaping metric. So for your source, you can put a description in here, but for your source, you'll see that there's, um, there's country address or country codes here. Um, you can just ignore that and you can put in your own subnet. So we can put 192.168, let's do 10.0 slash 24. 
and click on add. And that will put it in as a source. So let's just say that was our subnet 10.0 with a slash 24 subnet. Uh, the destination we're going to put as any. And then here we have an option for services. So we have service, TCP, UDP, TCP and UDP, ICMP protocol, and then application. So under application, you can click application. And then once you've done, once you've done that and it pops and populates it, you then can search for any type of application. So we have all these different applications that you can search for. So if I type in, it's this to net. Netflix. So we'll do Netflix video and audio. And then now we come down here to traffic shaping. No, oh, it didn't. It's not allowing it. There we go. There we go. So let's go back here. And I forgot. Actually, uh, this is a feature that hasn't been enabled yet. It should be enabled, I believe, in the next release, but you'll be able to choose it because it disables the traffic shaping. But for now, we're going to go ahead and uh, just keep the application out for now. And it will come down to traffic shaping. So you'll come down here to traffic shaping, and then you can do your limits. So you can do your limit based on a specific KDPS. We can put in, let's say, one, you know, 1,000. Or do you, after you put in zeros, it actually decides. Like we do, uh, see, it goes down to one gigabit. So if you do 0 0.5, 0 0.5, um, it basically goes to gigabits per second. So let's go back to unlimited KDPS. Let's do 1,000. So if you put in 1,000, it changes the uh, type to megabits per second. If you put in 1,000, it goes to gigabits. So if I put in 100 Mbps, and then we'll come down here to the upload, we'll put in 1,000 to change it to Mbps, and then we'll go over to 100. So we obviously have an up and down of 100, and then we can put a priority of either the highest or we can put it to the lowest. So you have the ability to do both high and low. And then we'll come back up here. You can change it to a specific protocol or TCP or UDP. So uh, in this situation, let's do 5064 SIP. We'll do TCP and UDP or just UDP itself. Uh, 5060. Um, and then here we have unlimited for that SIP traffic. And then we have the priority as the highest priority. So now we've created a, a SIP policy rule. Um, that looks for 5060 coming from any um, IP address in this subnet. Uh, we're going to give it unlimited bandwidth and we're going to give it the highest priority. And then that's pretty much it for uh, the bandwidth management settings and traffic shaping settings on the firewall. So just be aware if you have the older NSGs, you won't be able to apply any type of application. Um, with the flex in ATP, uh, that's a feature that's coming. Uh, that's why that option was grayed out when you chose application, but it will be a feature that's going to be available for the ATP and the flex. Uh, the NSP, unfortunately, will not get that option to be able to um, use applications for your bandwidth management policies. And then that's pretty much it uh, for controlling bandwidth in the cloud. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, you just need to be aware that when it comes to the base pack versus the pro pack, the free versus the paid Licensing, just be aware of that to get some extra features like on your AP, being able to uh, do your bandwidth management across multiple VLANs with the prioritization requires you to do a uh, have the pro pack on all your devices in Nebula. Uh, when it comes to switches, if you want to do um, if you, and switches, if you want to do it based on port, that requires you to have pro pack to do ingress and egress based on port, or if you wanted to do multiple vendor ID based VLANs that requires you to have the pro pack. And then of course, when it comes to the firewall, um, you just need to have uh, the security services if you're gonna to plan to use the application option um, that we saw here when it, when it comes available. If you wanna be able to use a service application, it will require you to have application control as one of the services for the firewall. And again, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the floor for questions for Q&A. Right. Okay. Thank you, Marcus. Um, first question. So you have to have a pro pack to do traffic shaping by VLAN? Yeah. So if you want to do this, two options. Let me go ahead and bring that back up here. Um, give me just a second here. I'm going to bring that screen so I can kind of go over that for you. Right here. 
Now, was that for, for the switches or for the access points? It just says, um, I don't know, he didn't specify it. Okay, so we'll, we'll specify it, we'll, we'll go through it again. So if you look under switches and we go to switch settings, when it comes to the switch side of things, if you wanna do a voice-based VLAN, um, you'll see here that we can do, and this is, this is a template, I don't wanna do a template. Let's switch settings really quick. There we go. So you'll see that it requires a pro pack for vendor-based VLANs when you want to do multiple OUI-based VLANs. So here, let's just say that you have a uh, set of printers that are all the same manufacturer. You have a set of SIP phones that are all the same manufacturer. Uh, you have a set of um, QR code scanners that are all the same manufacturer. Using the pro pack will allow you to do vendor-based VLANs, so where you can assign um, the vendor OUIs and the VLAN and give it a priority. So that means that all of your QR code scanners are gonna have a priority, all of your uh, printers are gonna have a specific priority, and then all of your SIP phones are gonna have a SIP, uh, specific priority. So this makes it easy. Um, you don't necessarily have to do this route. You can go through and just do, um, let's just say, uh, this QoS. And if you already have those devices on a specific VLAN and segregate it out, uh, you have your printers on a VLAN, you have your QR code scanners on a VLAN, and you have your, um, uh, your SIP phones on a specific VLAN. You have all these different things on different VLANs. Um, you don't have to use the pro pack. You could just say, well, it's already on this VLAN. Here's the priority I'm giving them. Whereas here, um, if they were all on the same, uh, if they were all, let's just say, on the same VLAN, you can still do, you can still um, segregate them out. Like you can have them all, your, uh, your phones, your printer, and your QR code scanner on the same VLAN. Let's just say that you have it on just the VLAN of one you can then separate each and every individual OUI based on the manufacturer and give them their own priority. So there's a little bit of flexibility. There's more flexibility when it comes to having the pro pack, but there's um, certainly ways around doing it with not using the pro pack. It's kind of a longer way of doing it. Okay, thank you, Marcus. The next question, Sizel uses one as the highest priority when industry standard is seven as the highest priority and one as the lowest. Yeah, it, you want me it, depending to on that? the vendor that you have. Yeah, no, I, I, I've seen that before. I mean, I've seen other vendors where it's reversed, where it's seven is the highest and one is the lowest. We kind of flip it around. We have one as the highest and seven as the lowest. There's other vendors that have flipped around, uh, but we do one as the highest and seven as the lowest. And just to prevent anybody from, um, uh, from warning about that, if you look at, say, our gateway, if I look at our security gateways, let me move over to this one here. Um, if you'll see on the screen when you go to the gateway section and you do set that setting up, it'll have a parentheses next to um, the uh, priority so you know, so you're not confused. So it says highest is one and low is six. Okay. You done, Marcus? Yeah, Did I it. just, okay. All right, uh, next question. If I have a switch access point and firewall in my network, where should I do bandwidth management? Um, that's actually a very good question. Um, you're gonna wanna start doing bandwidth management um, at the closest location to where the, the client's connecting. So um, in this situation, depending on the needs of the client, if they just need simple, um, rate limiting, then you can do it on the access point itself. So that's where you can start. You can start by looking at your network and the needs. If they just need each client that's connected wirelessly to be rate limited, do it on the access point. Um, if you need a little bit more than just that, if you need to start doing uh, prioritization where you're giving uh, specific traffic the different types of prioritization, I would first do it on the access point, but then you can also do it on the switch because then you're rate limiting at the access point section so you're saying that these clients that are connecting have, you know, 50 megs each or on this particular VLAN, but then you can segregate it even further as it goes to the switch and then you can start assigning priorities. So when it hits the switch, you can start using the priority based VLANs in order to say, okay, well, the guest network, sure, they have 50 megabits per second, but we want to uh, give them a lower priority over, say, your staff network. 
Um, so always start at the access point, kind of work your way forward based on the needs of the client. Um, if you need to start looking at applications when it's available uh, for the Flex and the USG, um, then you can start doing it on the gateway as well. So start from the access point, then do your switch, and then do your gateway. Um, the gateway is going to be very useful because once that option to use application control becomes live, um, then it'll kind of change the game a bit because you can then do prioritization based off of SIP. You can do prioritization based off of specific applications. Uh, if you are a company that is very heavily using, say, Zoom or Skype or any video conferencing software, you want to make sure you have the best overall experience, then you can give that particular application the highest priority or SIP the highest priority, whatever you need for your application. Great, all right, next question. On the switch, when would you use voice VLAN over regular QoS? Um, you would use the voice VLAN. Again, I'll go back and show that setting here. So if you go back and take a look at our switches, and we go back to switch settings, we have the two options for voice VLAN, which is right here. So voice VLAN is gonna be useful if you only need to, uh, if you have uh, SIP traffic and you have the same SIP phone and you just wanna have it assigned, automatically, dynamically assign the VLAN to that particular, um, to those particular phones traversing the network, you would wanna use voice VLAN. Um, other than that, uh, the QoS option is going to be if you've already got multiple devices that are on different VLANs, um, or you just want to segregate or prioritize based on VLAN. You have three different VLANs. You want them all, each to have their own priority. Use QoS. If you just have a, um, a SIP phone and you want to provide it with its own uh, VLAN and give it its own prioritization, use voice VLAN. All right. Last but not the least, Marcus. In what scenario would you use port-based bandwidth on the switch? Oh, okay, so that's going to be this option, I'm guessing, here. Uh, the port-based setting here that we have, um, as soon as it comes up, let's go back here. Switch settings. Oops, sorry. Uh, switch port is, you'll see that there's the ingress and the egress settings for each individual port um, for the switch port. So we'll go back and let it number two. So this is going to be useful um, in kind of like ISP-related scenarios or if you're doing an MDU um, and you have a switch that's going to each tenant and you want to give each tenant a specific amount of bandwidth coming off of the switch. So, you know, port two is going to a law of practice and you, you know, you are in charge of the MDU and you're setting it up so that they only get, you know, you have a one gig service coming in. This particular building or this particular um, office only gets, a, you know, you know, a hundred meg, you know, so, that particular port on port two is going directly into that particular office at this MDU and they got their own firewall. That's when you would want to use bandwidth control on the port, on the switch. Um, when you have individual ports that are going to different offices or going to different locations or um, it's servicing a specific client and that particular client has needs of having specific bandwidth, that's when you would do it. Um, you would do it based off of that particular physical port. Okay, Marcus, I think that would be it for questions. Did you want to add anything else? All right. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else to add, um, but as far as if you guys have any more questions, um, again, what you can do here is you can email me with all of your questions. Uh, my email address is uh, marcush at zycel.com, M-A-R-C-U-S-H at zycel.com. And again, I'll put that up on the screen for you to see. Um, it should be there right there. If you have any questions about today's presentation, if you have any questions about bandwidth management, feel free to reach out to me uh, and I'll respond as soon as I get it. Um, but I can't think of anything else to add. Um, if you have any questions about the differences in our licensing, I can go over that with you as well. Um, but yeah, just feel free to shoot me an email. All right, that wraps up our webinar for today. And um, thank you everybody. Thank you, Marcus, and we'll see you on our next webinar on Thursday at 11 a.m. PDT. Have a good one, guys. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye, everyone.